Assalamualaikum everyone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahduhu la sharika lah. Anna Muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanutuku allaha wa kulu kawlan sadida. Yuslah lakum amalakum wa yaffir lakum zunubakum. من يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد ربي شاهد صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأبدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear brothers and sisters الحمد لله رب العالمين Once again we are here to reflect on the names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى And after today uh, there will be only one more name left uh, to complete this series And as we inch closer to the conclusion of this football series I pray to Allah that uh, He سبحانه وتعالى allows us all to benefit from these reflections uh, there is an authentic hadith recorded by uh, Al-Bukhari and narrated by Abu Huraira where the Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah has 99 names, 100 less, uh, 100 less one, and he who memorizes them all by heart will enter paradise. Now, without a doubt, in my mind at least, that this is encouragement from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we should put in the effort and try to memorize as many of these names as we can. We already put in the uh, effort to memorize verses from the Qur'an, this is one more way in which we can put in that extra effort, go that extra mile in order for us to become better individually. And inshallah, may Allah reward us for this effort and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the wisdom and the comprehension so that we may benefit and put these uh, these learnings into practice. Allahumma ameen. So for today, we're going to reflect on the name Ar rashid which means the right in guidance. Uh, some people also translate it as the guide. And from among the names of Allah, or Asma al Husna, this is one of those names that isn't explicitly mentioned in the Quran. And we've discussed this before. You know, there are 81 names that are mentioned explicitly in the Quran, and the rest are from scholars. And if you look at the list from these different scholars and you compare them, you'll find that there are some very minor differences. You know, one name may be present here, omitted in the other, and so on. And since I'm using the list compiled by Imam al-Ghazali, this name is present in that list. And the root of al-Rashid is ra shin dal or rush, uh, which has the meanings of to be directed to the right way or to be guided on the right path. And from among the Islamic scholars, uh, one Fakhruddin al-Razi mentions that there are two related words for the name al-Rashid. The first word is Rashid itself. To, uh, which means someone who has clear vision that is informed by wisdom and knowledge. And the second word that draws from um, Ar-Rashid is Murshid, which refers to someone who guides or directs. So taking these, these two names, we can conclude that Ar-Rashid refers to the one, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who directs to the right path with a clear vision that is informed by wisdom and knowledge. And the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Ar-Rashid, also overlaps with another name we discussed not too, not too long ago. And that name is Al-Hadi, which means the guide. So let's just start this uh, khutbah with the reflection on what is the difference between the two. So from the root word Hadi, there is a derivative word, which we also discussed, uh, which is Hidayah. And Hidayah means guidance along a path. So from Al-Hadi, we understand that it means guidance while we are on a path. So the example that I used previously was that of a smartphone. So let's say you have an Apple iPhone. You're not going to ask guidance on how to use this phone from somebody who, say, might be an expert on a Google phone or a Samsung phone. So the Google or Samsung expert, while you know they might be able to tell you about those phones, they may not necessarily know or may not know anything about the Apple iPhone. And that's because, you know, it's a completely different set of knowledge that they would have to have. So, you know, unless this Google or Samsung phone expert has knowledge or awareness about the iPhone, they're not going to be a good guide for you. So when we think about receiving guidance, we need to have an awareness about possession of skill and knowledge in order to be successful in whatever task we're looking to accomplish uh, in that moment. So whether it's, you know, using a smartphone or something trivial like that, uh, for some of us, it may not be so trivial, um, or learning a new subject, maybe like a foreign language, 
or maybe even traveling to some new destination that you've never been to before, there has to be some inherent understanding that there is a knowledge and a skill set available for you to do these kinds of um, things. So we should understand something about the expert and something about the guide who is going to give us this knowledge and give us this information. So if I take that framing and then I apply it to a Rashid, uh, then a Rashid is the guide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guide who does not need direction, can direct anyone who seeks guidance. In fact, at least 17 times in a day, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and to keep us on the straight path. And as you can probably guess, I'm talking about Surah Al-Fatiha. So there's verse 6 within Surah Al-Fatiha, which says, Ehdina sirat al mustaqim which translates to guide us to the straight path. So every time we pray uh, our, our daily prayers, Surah Fatiha is the chapter we recite, and within it, there's a verse where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, and we do this regularly every day. So the guidance mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha implies being directed and guided to success. Okay, meaning guide, direct, lead, and grant us the correct guidance. Because the guidance that isn't correct is not guiding us to a destination that we want to go to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word as-sirat al-mustaqeen. And what is as-sirat al-mustaqeen? So linguistically speaking, as-sirat al-mustaqeen is a path that is free from any forks or divergence. So it's a straight path. And Islamically, it is the path that leads a believer, a Muslim, to paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surat is also the path that is protected from the corruption of the hellfire. And this goes back to an authentic hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where she asked uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the day when earth will be changed to another earth and so will be the heavens, where will the people on that day be? And he sallallahu alayhi wa said, on the Sirat or the bridge across hellfire. So if you identify as a Muslim today, you may find yourself filled with gratitude, especially on a Jummah. And rightfully so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you, myself included, to Islam. And Allah has guided us to the knowledge that gives us awareness and tools to practice Islam. And if we live in a place where we can practice our faith in a manner that is prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without fear of persecution, without fear of being condemned for practicing our faith, that is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So us gathering here today, for example, is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah has already given us guidance because we are directed towards Islam, then why do we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance? Isn't it enough that we are Muslims? Don't we automatically acquire the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times of the day because we are Muslims? And if that were true, that we were automatically guided once we became believing servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's no need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to direct us to pray five times a day and recite Surah Al-Fatiha, where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance on the straight path. So there's a, a before and after. We could be guided, but it doesn't stop there. We need that constant guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in order for us to become better Muslims, in order for us to connect with our faith, Islam, we need to have that connection and that connection is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to stay firm on the path of Allah, you know, we need Allah as our murshid, our guide. So another analogy I'll use here is that think of, um, think of GPS devices. I don't know how many of you remember who are listening today. You know, we used to have these GPS devices made by companies like Garmin, Nuvi, even TomTom. And Today, we take it for granted. You have smartphones that have a GPS radio built in. You've got a maps application, and the map application uses a GPS radio to tell you turn-by-turn -turn direction, okay? Back then, you didn't have that. You had this GPS device that was more expensive in some cases than the smartphones we carry in our pocket today. It had no internet connection, but it was able to give you guidance. And even back then, we didn't have unlimited data connection. So if your GPS had an old map because there's new construction going on in your city, you didn't have those directions 
to go to those new places. You would have to rely on your ability to look at your environment and figure out where do you need to navigate to go to wherever is it that you're trying to go because it's a new destination or new place in your city. And back then, because these map files are so large, I'm talking about you know greater than two gigabytes in a lot of times, a, a lot of instances. You know, to do that, I'd say 15 years ago, you would have to pay a lot of money, and it would take you at least two days to even download anything like that over your home internet connection. And to put that into perspective, you could watch a 90 minutes Netflix movie at regular HD quality, not even 4K, and that would be about four gigs, twice the size, and you could watch that within 90 minutes. So a lot has changed since then. So in order to download the update, again, picking up on this GPS example, just to be able to update the, the map to the city where you live in, you'd have to go buy the update and you'd have to go replace the disk that was inside that GPS device. So basically once, maybe twice a year, you had an update depending on which brand or which model of the GPS device you, you, know, you were using. So GPS apps on our smartphone, constantly updated. You don't have to think about it, it just happens behind the scenes. You don't care how often it happens because you've got unlimited data. You're always connected to high-speed internet and just things just keep moving along. You take all of that for granted. You know you need guidance, you go open up that app. But unlike the GPS apps on our smartphone and GPS devices, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need updates. There is no update Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or get an update to yourself to update your version of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is right in front of us in the Quran. The Quran does not need updates. The Quran is there for all of eternity until the day of judgment. There are no bug fixes for the Quran. There is no correction that needs to be made to the Quran. As it is, it's a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this guide that is timeless, that sits with us, whether it's on a phone or on our shelf, in a book, and it's just there for us to give us guidance. The catch is, are we going to engage with the Quran? Are we going to seek that guidance? And are we going to do something with that guidance? And the Quran is universal. It's perpetual. It's for all of humanity. And that is part of the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. It's not just through the life examples of the prophets, but it's also through this book that is universal and that speaks to all people for all time. I'll use one more analogy. Uh, you know, also to drive that point home, which is, you know, think of a tour guide. Let's say you like to travel, you go to a new city. You know, you may not know anything about that city, or maybe you just know enough about that city to go and, uh, you know, want to visit it. So what do you do? You know, you, you find that guide who knows more about the city than you do. So we need that knowledge. We need that wisdom, you know, and that guide is going to do, you know, a couple of things for you. You know, they're going to ask you how long is your stay. So once they know that, then they're going to say, okay, well, here's some places you might be interested in going. You know, what about this place? And they'll tell you something about that place. What about that place? And they'll tell you something about that place. And they'll help you plan this activities, these activities to all of these different destinations. So once you've done that, the guide is going to then take you to that destination. You know, they'll make sure that, you know, you are enjoying your time in the city. They'll make sure that you are getting a flavor of the city that you ordinarily wouldn't get it if you were just doing this on your own because you don't have the knowledge or the awareness or the understanding of the city. Okay, so the guide will give you colloquial knowledge. They will give you information so that you can then feel connected to the city because only the locals know this kind of thing. And then they'll also make sure that they're not guiding you through a path that is treacherous. Imagine being a city where you know nothing about and you can probably think of a city where if you didn't you know, find yourself in the right neighborhood in the right hour of the day, that something really serious harm, something really serious or dangerous could happen to you. And the job of the guide is to make sure they use that wisdom and knowledge so that you are not finding yourself in a situation that's going to compromise your personal safety and that your entire journey, your entire uh, trip in the city is smooth. So make sure that there's no... Uh, no harm to you. Make sure they use their knowledge and put it to work. And this way also give you a flavor of the city. So all of that is something that a good guide will give to you. So what do we learn from this analogy of a local travel guide? 
we know that the travel guide must be an expert. You know, it can't just be somebody who themselves are visiting the city or only visited the city maybe once or twice. The guide has to have really good knowledge about the points of interest. They must have awareness about the dangers that exist within the city and then use that knowledge to make sure that your presence in that city is enjoyable, your safety is not in any way compromised and that you can then return safely home to where you came from. And the guide needs to have all of this knowledge, all of this experience and all of this wisdom. And if I frame that back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than any travel guide. Why? Because all source of knowledge comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All source of truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we choose to be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was always going to be on the path of righteousness. So why would we not choose that path and choose a path that will cause us harm? You know, there's a big movement in the United States about doing it yourself has, has been going on for many, many decades, you know, but there are some things that we just can't do it without a guide if we don't know anything about it. And one of those things is living our lives in a way that will benefit us in this world and also benefit us in the hereafter. And that is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided to us in abundance in the Quran. And the path that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made clear to us. In Surah Al-Baqarah, we are told, let there be no compulsion in religion for the truth stands out clearly from falsehood. In this one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we should not force anyone to become Muslim. The evidence is there for all of humanity to see, if only they choose to go see it. The guidance and its evidence are clear. Pick your language. If you can't read Arabic, pick your language, read the translation, and there are many good translations in our day and time today. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, the heart follows, and then the individual embraces Islam, and that is the choice they make. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them the way. So there's no reason for us as Muslims to compel other people to become Muslim because that is the job of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this brings me to another point. You know, how many times have you experienced a moment when something happened to you, something unexpected, or you find someone else and you hear their story and you, you, you see something unexpected happen to them and then you say, oh, it, it was luck or, you know, I was just lucky. And you make statements like that or you think about statements like that. And I want to highlight that this is a dangerous mindset. And saying these things or believing that it was luck will nibble at our iman. And why is that? Because if we believe in luck, and if we believe that it was because of luck, then we are rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're taking away credit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving it to chance for anything that happens to us uh, or somebody else who we might you know, see happen to. And when we say something happens because of luck, we are saying that there was no plan behind it because it was a random chance encounter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for every one of us. Every one of us. And we just don't see it in the moment necessarily. We see the things that are immediately in front of us. We experience and feel the challenges and turbulence that happens in our communities. You know, And just because we don't see the whole plan doesn't mean that there is no plan. From Surah Toba, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of any guide that may exist. And it says, in Allah bikulli shayin alim. Surely Allah has full knowledge of everything. And Allah has placed guidance all around us. We just have to lift up our head, metaphorically speaking, and look around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given us the ability to choose. And we can choose to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Or we can choose not to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For guidance. We can choose to believe that we are self-sufficient, that we don't need a guide, or we can choose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best guide of all and that we need that in our life on a daily basis. And similarly, we can choose to take credit for our successes and say that we did this all on our own. We are self-made. And that lie too is something we can say to ourselves and not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with every action we take, there's nothing that we can ever do that will reduce the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And inshallah, may Allah elevate all of our understandings of the Quran and of the teachings that we have received through the prophets, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and everybody before him. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala inshallah increase us in knowledge and wisdom and give us the ability to apply this knowledge and wisdom when we need it most. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, as with every attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attribute gives us value only when we learn how to apply it on our own lives. And, you know, this attribute of Allah ar-Rashid is no different. So how can we apply this attribute? One way to do this is to constantly seek guidance, is to constantly remind ourselves to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not turn a seeker away. We should ask Allah for guidance in everything that we do. Whether it's making a small decision, a big decision, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Ask Allah, is this the right decision for me? Am I making, taking the right step? Whatever it may be. And every time you recite Surah Al-Fatiha in your Salah, you should remind yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you to ask for guidance and that you're always in need of guidance. And I say this to myself first as a reminder and then to all of you. And if we feel sour inside and we feel like we are lost that is a good time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and with all the recent events that have been taking place you know many of us have found ourselves asking some really tough questions and really struggling to find easy answers to them and many of us may have experienced an overwhelming sense of grief or maybe even an inability to change the state of the actions which then causes us to feel more grief or helplessness. And, and these are difficult times, my dear brothers and sisters. And it is especially in these times like this that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us guidance. You know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for comfort. That is asking for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge that will allow us to expand our understanding so that we don't fall into the traps of what other people say because we are not able to rationalize things on our own. And we ask Allah to give us the awareness that allows us to see our own condition truly for what it is and be able to reflect on our condition so that we can find the language to describe what is troubling us so that we can share our wisdom with others in hopes that it will give them comfort and guidance. And that too is a form of sadaqah through the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we find ourselves troubled by the world around us, it is time for us to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and open our heart to ar rashid In Surah Al-Ankabut, we are told, as for those who struggle in our cause, we will surely guide them along our way. And Allah is certainly with the good doers. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with pious spouses and offsprings who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all guidance and keep us on the path that will lead us all to Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to forgive us, our parents, and the believers on the day of judgment when we win, when we'll all be judged in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana habduna min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurata ayyuna wa jala al-mutakina imama. Rabbana faqfir lana zanubana wa kafir anna sayyatina tuwafana ma al-abrar. Rabbi jalli mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabal dua. Rabbana faqfir li wa li walidaya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakumun nisab. Rabbana amanna faqfir lana wa rahamna wa anta khayru rahimin. Inna allaha yamru bil adli wal ahsani wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha'in al fashai wal munkari wal baghi. يا أيزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يسيفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you Amir for the great kutba I think Shadi had to step away for some meeting and she asked me to and this session. So I wish all of you a great Friday, Juma, and good weekend. Aslam See you next week. Thank you. Yeah. Next week. Inshallah. Inshallah.